सो हेलो एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन होप ऑल यू ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग फाइन एंड योर प्रिपरेशंस फॉर आई एन एस सी टी इज गोइंग वेल एंड टुडे वी आर हियर विद अ सेशन ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यूज प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यूज फ्रॉम माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग वन बाई वन सो डॉक्टर नसीर हियर यू आर माइक्रोबायोलॉजी ग्रुप डिस्कसिंग राइट आई एन एस सी टी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यूज सर बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट पी वाई क्यू right important question identify the structure shown in the figure b so here if you see there are two figures figure a and figure b we have two figures figure a and figure b and they are telling identify figure b in the question if you see the picture this is nothing but the picture of cell wall so in this question we are discussing a concept that is cell wall we are discussing a concept that is cell wall sir cell wall is a very important concept very important topic for ini cet sir so where if you talk about the cell wall you know that we have four types of microorganisms bacteria fungi viruses and parasites among these four cell wall is a structure which is present only in bacteria and fungi cell wall is not there in viruses and parasites sir so viruses consists of outer layer envelope or capsid if you come to parasites parasites consists of outer layer protozoa consists of cyst in the cyst it consists of cyst wall cyst wall right so that's why sir cell wall is present only in bacteria and fungi now we have to identify that is bacterial cell wall or fungal cell wall that is the first thing if you identify it as bacterial cell wall then we have to identify is it gram positive bacterial cell wall or gram negative bacterial cell wall or mycobacterial cell wall because there is a difference in these three bacterial cell walls so there is a difference so now if you talk about this first thing sir how to differentiate bacterial cell wall and fungal cell wall that is the first thing sir if we see a layer peptidoglycan layer if we see a layer peptidoglycan layer peptidoglycan layer then obviously it is bacterial cell wall it may be gram positive gram negative or mycobacteria bacterial cell wall means it will be having peptidoglycan layer fungal cell wall will be having chitin layer <coughs> fungal cell wall will be having chitin layer so if there is chitin layer it is fungal cell wall it is fungal cell wall if it is peptidoglycan layer it is bacterial cell wall now if you see the structure sir peptidoglycan layer is present peptidoglycan layer is present in both the cell walls figure a and figure b but if you see there is a thick peptidoglycan cell wall in gram positive and there is a thin peptidoglycan layer in gram negative that is the first important differentiating point sir peptidoglycan layer is thick in case of gram positive and it is very thin in gram negative and it is thin in even in mycobacterial cell wall now coming to the final identification point sir the final identification point is sir if you see along with the peptidoglycan layer if you see tcoic acid right if you see tcoic acid it is gram positive if you see outer membrane om om means outer membrane outer membrane consists of three things lipid a core and o antigen that is lps antigen outer membrane consists of three things lipid a core and o antigen o antigen means lps antigen so if there is tcoic acid it is gram positive cell wall if there is outer membrane consisting of lipid a core and lipopolysaccharide o antigen then it is gram negative cell wall therefore the answer is gram negative cell wall because it is having outer membrane which consists of lipid a core and o antigen right very simple sir clear cut easily we can identify gram positive cell wall tcoic acid there gram negative cell wall outer membrane will be there mycobacterial cell wall right sir mycobacterial cell wall sir mycobacterial cell wall consists of lipoarabinomannan shortly sweetly we call it as lam lipoarabinomannan and mycolic acid sir lipoarabinomannan and mycolic acid will be there in mycobacterial cell wall tcoic acid will be there in gram positive cell wall outer membrane will be there in gram negative cell wall and chitin will be there in fungal cell wall so this is how we identify the cell walls of bacteria and fungi very important question for ini cet so not only i am discussing the question i am discussing the entire topic cell wall how to identify the cell wall of gram positive gram negative mycobacteria and also fungal cell wall sir so once we are done with the first topic cell wall moving on to the second topic sir so second topic is based on motility second topic is based on motility of the organisms so read the question a truck driver presented with painless genital ulcer on penis and enlarged lymph nodes the motility of the organism responsible for this condition is demonstrated by 
so ultimately what is the topic the topic is motility they are asking how are you going to demonstrate the motility of the organisms <coughs> sir to demonstrate the motility first we have to see the organism to see the organism we require microscope because microorganisms are unicellular they are not visible to our naked eye we need the magnifying instrument and that magnifying instrument what we use is microscope so the most commonly used microscope is light microscope which is also known as bright field microscope the most commonly used microscope is light microscope which is also known as bright field microscope sir can we see all organisms under bright field microscope without staining because sir to see the motility of the organisms first thing what you should know, what you should remember is we should not stain if you stain organisms will get killed killed organisms they can't move therefore to see the motility first thing is we should not stain the organisms without staining can we see all the organisms by the most commonly used microscope that is light microscope or bright field microscope answer is yes we can see all organisms all organisms motility by bright field microscope because we can see all organisms under bright field microscope without staining except thin organisms except thin organisms so thin organisms can't be seen under bright field microscope without staining with staining we can see but to see the motility we should not stain without staining we can't see the thin organisms when you can't see the thin organisms you can't see the motility of the thin organisms so that's why we go for dark field microscope dark field microscope is a microscope where you can see all organisms without staining as you can see all organisms without staining you can see the motility of all organisms including thin organisms if you want to see the motility of thin organisms thin organisms motility sir we require dark field microscope that is not possible by bright field microscope sir which are the thin bacteria sir thin bacteria is only one sir spirochet spirochet are the only thin bacteria there are no other thin bacteria and you know that spirochet is not the name of the bacteria sir spirochet are the group of bacteria which are spiral in shape hai na spiral in shape sir like this the bacteria which are spiral in shape like this those are known as spirochet sir how many bacteria are spiral in shape sir we have three bacteria which are spiral in shape tryponema borrelia and leptospira tryponema borrelia and leptospira these are the only three bacteria which are spiral in shape therefore these three bacteria together known as spirochet and what is the speciality of spirochet sir these are the thin organisms these are the only thin organisms and their motility can't be seen under bright field microscope we require dark field microscope whereas all other bacteria as they are not thin they can be seen under light microscope that is bright field microscope and you can see their motility right so this is the first thing what we need to know in the topic motility right we require dark field microscope for thin organisms thin organisms are only spirochetes we have tryponema borrelia and leptospira so now the question what in the question what we have to see is that clinical presentation what examiner is talking whether he is talking about the thin organism or other organisms if it is if the examiner is talking about thin organism answer is dark field microscope if the examiner is talking about other organisms answer is light field microscope so a driver presented with painless genital ulcer on penis sir the examiner is talking about a disease syphilis syphilis and syphilis is caused by the bacteria tryponema pallidum and tryponema is a spirochet therefore answer is dark field microscope sir now you can ask me sir genital ulcer is caused by other organisms also like klebsiella granulomatis chlamydia trachomatis hemophilus ducreae they can also cause genital ulcer they can also cause genital ulcer sir hemophilus ducreae to ruled out because it causes painless genital ulcer right now remaining is tryponema and chlamydia both are possible both are possible but still right but still if you talk about painless lymph nodes also it goes towards syphilis it goes towards syphilis because in chlamydia sir lymph nodes may be painful so whatever it is they are talking about syphilis sir whenever they ask about the motility we have to think of thin organisms only you should not go for thick if they ask about motility blindly answer dark field microscope that is right this is the next important question which we need to know for inict motility first was cell wall second is motility and i have described everything about motility now here sir moving on to the next question next question and the next topic sir next question next topic is based on the topic sterilization and disinfection sir this is the topic sterilization and disinfection
So if you talk about the sterilization and disinfection, sterilization and disinfection, you know that in this topic, sir, we have two methods of sterilization and disinfection, physical methods and chemical methods. We have two methods, physical methods and chemical methods. Physical methods and chemical methods. Sir, physical methods means we use physical agents to sterilize and disinfect the instruments. Chemical methods means we use chemical agents to sterilize and disinfect the instruments. Sir, physical agents are usually, we use three physical agents, right? We use three physical agents. We use either heat or filtration or radiation. Heat, filtration and radiation. These are the three physical agents what we use to kill the organisms to sterilize and disinfect the instruments. If you talk about the chemical methods, sir, we use three types of chemical methods. HLDs, ILDs and LLDs. High level disinfectants, intermediate level disinfectants, low level disinfectants. Right. So we have two methods, physical method and chemical method. Sir, first of all, what do you mean by sterilization and what do you mean by disinfection? That is an important point to know. So sterilization means killing all the organisms, including the spore state of the organisms. I call it a spore plus, <coughs> killing all the organisms, including the spore state of the organisms. I call it a spore plus. Disinfection means killing all the organisms, excluding spores. Spores will not get killed by disinfection. So spore plus, including spores are killed. Sterilization, spore minus. Spores are spared spores are not killed but all other state and all other organisms are killed so disinfection so the main difference between sterilization and disinfection are sterilization everything is killed including the spores disinfection everything is killed excluding the spores so in simple words what we use is spore plus means sterilization spore minus means disinfection and we have two methods of sterilization and disinfection physical method and chemical method so if you talk about the physical method we have three important physical methods Right, we have three important physical methods, heat, filtration and radiation. We have three important chemical methods, HLDs, ILDs and LLDs. High level disinfectants, intermediate level disinfectants, low level disinfectants. Now once you know the methods, now we need to know which are among these methods, which are the ones which causes sterilization, which are the ones which causes disinfection. Sir, physical methods, all the three physical methods, they cause sterilization. All the three physical methods, they cause sterilization. Sterilization means, sir, spore plus. Sterilization means spore plus. All of them they cause sterilization, including the spores, they kill the organisms. But if you talk about the chemical methods, sir, HLDs, they cause sterilization. That's why they are high level. LLDs means low level. Low level means they cause just disinfection, spore minus. <coughs> they cause disinfection, spore minus. ILDs, sir, ILDs usually they cause disinfection, spore minus. Usually they cause disinfection, spore minus. But sometimes, under special situations, they can kill the spores and they can cause sterilization. That's why they are known as intermediate level. Why intermediate level means, sir, usually they cause disinfection. That means usually they cannot kill the spores. But sometimes they can kill the spores under special special situations. That's why known as ILD, intermediate level. But that is just to explain, to understand what do you mean by ILDs. But what happens usually, sir, usually they are disinfection. So therefore, what we need to understand here is, sir, heat causes sterilization, filtration causes sterilization, radiation causes sterilization. HLDs cause sterilization and LLDs, they are the only ones that causes disinfection. But what about ILDs? What to remember? Because they cause disinfection and they also cause sterilization. But if you see here, sterilization can happen only under special situations, under special conditions, not every time. So normally, routinely, what happens is disinfection. And that's why usually what we have to remember is ILDs also causes disinfections because that is what usually happens, disinfection. So now we know what do you mean by sterilization, what do you mean by disinfection? We know all the methods of sterilization and disinfection, right? We know all the methods of sterilization and disinfection. Now once you understood this, now coming back to the question, question number three, the topic is sterilization and disinfection. What they are asking is, a patient met with, a patient met with RTA, RTA means road traffic accident, brought to the emergency room, patient expo expectorated blood on the floor. What is the first step to be taken right, in cleaning the blood? Sir, that 
under sterilization under sterilization and disinfection the topic what they are talking here is blood spill management they are talking about blood spill management how are you going to manage when there is a blood spill in the hospital so here i got different answers right few of you answered a and few of you answered b right first two questions all of you answered right but here we got two different options a and b right because this is a tricky question very tricky question because this is a nicet question right it is a little tricky question see nicet questions are very simple but they are little tricky they test you how thorough you are in the topic they won't test you whether you know the topic or not what they test is how thorough you are in the topic that is what they test so here they are not not asking which is the disinfectant we use to clean the blood spill if they ask which is the disinfectant we have to use then answer is a then answer is a right 0.5 to 1% sodium hypochlorite but when they ask but when they ask which is the first step in the blood spill management sir so first step in the blood spill management is place an absorbent material over the blood spill <coughs> place an absorbent material over the blood spill blood spill then we have to pour 0.5 to 1% sodium hypochlorite on the on the absorbent material third step third step wait for 15 to 20 minutes wait for 15 to 20 minutes four step wash it with wash it with water so this is the blood spill management four steps in blood spill management this is about blood spill management now if you ask me the question why to place the absorbent material sir see now when there is a blood spill on the floor if you take 0.5 to 1% sodium hypochlorite which is a disinfectant which is a disinfectant if you pour it it is a liquid it is a liquid if you pour it on the blood on the floor that blood will splash on you that blood it may splash on you splash back on you to avoid that first we have to place an absorbent material over the blood spill on the floor after that you have to after that you have to pour the 0.5 to 1% sodium hypochlorite over the absorbent material so that it should not splash back on you and then we have to leave it for 15 to 20 minutes so that the sodium hypochlorite will act and kill the organisms if it is if they are present and finally we have to wipe it with water so first step is placing the absorbent material on the blood spill in the same question if they would have if they would have asked which is the second step the answer would have been sodium hypochlorite in the same question if they would have asked which is the disinfectant to be used the answer would have become sodium hypochlorite that is a wow your explanation the way answer question darling sir thank you very much okay hope you have understood okay once you have understood this sir this is the third topic sterilization disinfection see i am not giving the questions i am giving the topics which are very important and i am giving the entire thing regarding the topic right first topic what we discussed was cell wall second topic motility third topic sterilization and disinfection in the same sterilization and disinfection sir one more question based on the same topic sterilization and disinfection we have one more question we have one more question a patient suffering from severe gastritis has undergone upper gi endoscopy what is the best disinfectant used to sterilize the endoscope this is the question guys waiting for your answer so waiting for your answer here <coughs> please answer waiting for your answer here <coughs> okay vaishnavi answer d okay anaga answered a then shijit answered d arun answered d okay minnu answered a ganesh answered directly glutaraldehyde so again we have two different opinions here glutaraldehyde and orthothalaldehyde so two different opinions here between option a and option b right i will tell you i will tell you all of you are right <laughs> right so we have to praise if your answer is right i am praising you all of you are right those who answered a you are also right those who answered d you are also right because glutaraldehyde can also be used to sterilize the endoscopes orthothalaldehyde can also be used to sterilize the endoscopes both are the answers but here you can't answer both you have to opt only one both can be used but you have to opt only one among these two you have to opt one so you have to go for the best one best one means which is the best glutaraldehyde in action in sterilizing the endoscope answer so the best among glutaraldehyde and orthothalaldehyde is 
ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड इज द बेस्ट वन एंड आंसर इज ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड आंसर इज ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड नॉट ग्लूटोरॉलिहाइड राइट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू आंसर ग्लूटोरॉलिहाइड हियर आई नो व्हाई यू आंसर ग्लूटोरॉलिहाइड बिकॉज़ लाइक वी आर डिस्कसिंग दीस आर पीवी क्यूज प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस एक्चुअली इन द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड वाज नॉट देयर अमंग द ऑप्शंस ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड वाज नॉट देयर अमंग द ऑप्शंस व्हेन ऑर्थोथोलॉलिहाइड वाज नॉट देयर obviously the answer is glutaraldehyde and that's why the answer was glutaraldehyde <laughs> that's why the answer was but you have to understand the concept man you have to understand the concept right it, the same question right chances of repeating the same question is very very less chances of repeating the topic of that question is very very high so once they have asked glutaraldehyde then they if they ask they may ask orthothoraldehyde and you have to remember orthothoraldehyde is better than glutaraldehyde in sterilizing endoscopes so glutaraldehyde can be the, it can be it can it can be uh, it can be the answer only if there is no orthothoraldehyde among the options if there is orthothoraldehyde always orthothoraldehyde is better than glutaraldehyde that's why the answer is d so next in the same topic sterilization and disinfection in the same topic sterilization disinfection the next sub topic is so test for disinfectants test for disinfectants this is the topic this which are the tests we use to test the disinfectants which are the tests we use to test the disinfectants sir why to test the disinfectants man everything you have to test you are using ortho what is that in the previous question you saw blood spill management you are using sodium hypochlorite and pouring on the blood and you are cleaning it and you are telling organisms are killed who knows organisms killed or not you should keep on testing the disinfectants intermittently whether they are working properly or not and which are the tests we use to test the disinfectants we have four tests to use we use to test the disinfectants and those four tests are the four options given here those four tests are the four options given here right sir riedel walker test chick martin test kelsey sykes test morris in use test these are the sir we have four tests to test the disinfectants we have four tests to test the disinfectants but what what do we test in these four tests <coughs> sir riedel walker test we test the efficacy of the disinfectant efficacy means how efficient the disinfectant is in killing the organisms efficacy chick martin test also we test the efficacy of the disinfectant kelsey sykes test we won't test the efficacy we test the capacity of the disinfectant we test the capacity right capacity means what sir capacity of the disinfectant to retain its efficacy even after repeated use if you use disinfectants repeatedly they may lose their efficacy now on repeated use whether they are losing their efficacy or not that capacity is tested by kelsey sykes test sir maurer's in use test we test the contamination of the disinfectants maurer's in use test we test the we test the contamination of the <coughs> disinfectants therefore the question what they are asking here is contamination contamination of the disinfectant tested by maurer's in use test the answer is maurer's in use test in the same question if they ask efficacy efficacy then answer is either reader walker or chick martin test but both are the answers if they ask efficacy both are the answers if they ask efficacy right but which one to opt among these two when they ask efficacy if both are there among the options reader walker and chick martin test always remember chick martin is better than reader walker chick martin is better than reader walker in testing the efficacy right sir now to okay for sir but after some time i will get confused breedel walker chick martin which was better so that's why i always tell students remember alphabetical order alphabetical order you know that in the alphabetical order c comes first r comes next the first comes is better than the next one the for chick martin is better than breedel walker right you will not forget chick martin test is a better compared to breedel walker because c comes first after c comes first in the alphabetical order compared to r If they ask efficacy, go for Chick Martin. If Chick Martin is not there, then you have to go for Riedel Walker. If their capacity, the answer is Kelsey's test. If there is contamination, the answer is Maurer's in use test. Right. Once you have understood this, moving to the next topic. Sir, in the same topic, sterilization and disinfection. Sterilization, disinfection. The subtopic. <coughs> the subtopic. What is the subtopic? The subtopic is Spalding's classification of medical devices. This is the subtopic. 
Spalding's classification of medical devices. Sir, first of all, Spalding. What do you mean by Spalding, sir? Spalding is the name of the scientist who classified the medical devices. Sir, what are medical devices? The devices used in the hospital, medicine field, medical field. All the devices used in the hospital, medical field are medical devices. Spalding is a scientist who classified the medical devices, who classified the medical devices into critical, semi-critical and non-critical. Right? Spalding classified the medical devices into critical medical devices, semi-critical medical devices, and non-critical medical devices. <coughs> non-critical medical devices. Fine. Sir, based on what? Based on what he classified the medical devices into critical, semi-critical and non-critical. Sir, based on whether the medical devices are penetrating the mucous membrane or not. Penetrating mucous membrane or not. If they penetrate mucous membrane, they enter into sterile site. The instruments which are penetrating the mucous membrane entering into the sterile site. Spalding said these are critical devices because they are entering into sterile site. The instruments which come in contact with the mucous membrane. Come in contact with the mucous membrane. But they are not penetrating the mucous membrane. Therefore they are not entering into the sterile site. Right. The Spalding's called these devices as semi-critical. As semi-critical. Semi-critical. Now if you come to non-critical, sir, the in devices which come in contact, come in contact with the intact skin, forget about mucous membrane. They are coming in contact with the intact skin. Intact skin. Spalding's called it as non-critical. They are not critical. They are just coming in contact with the skin. Right. Sir, there are many examples. If you talk about the medical devices penetrating, penetrating the mucous membrane, entering into the sterile side. Sir, surgical instruments. There are many examples. Surgical instruments are the best examples. Even IV cannula, they penetrate and enter the blood. Blood is the sterile site. Blood is the sterile site. Semi-critical, which come in contact with the mucous membrane, but they will not penetrate the mucous membrane. Answers are endoscopes. There are many examples. Important example is endoscope. They come in contact with the mucous membrane, but they will not penetrate the mucous membrane. Endoscopes. So the instruments which come in contact with the skin. Sir, stethoscope. Right, stethoscope. There are many other. Like BP apparatus you take. Right, BP apparatus, ECG leads, anything which come in contact with the skin. Sir, Spalding's call it as non-critical. Hope you have understood. First of all, now, first we have to understand the classification and we have understood the classification. Right? Sir, what are critical devices? Semi-critical and non-critical. Semi-critical, uh, critical means which penetrate the mucous membrane, enter into the sterile site. For example, surgical instruments. Semi-critical means come in contact with the mucous membrane. They will not penetrate the mucous membrane. Example, endoscopes. Non-critical means which come in contact with the intact skin. Now the question is, okay sir, classify to classification is done, but why is Spalding classified? What is the basis why he has to classify and what, what was the need of classification of the medical devices? Answer is to decide which disinfectant we have to use to disinfect these medical devices. Spalding said critical devices to we require HLDs, high level disinfectants, must. Right, that is sterilization has to happen. That means spores also, spores, spores should also get killed. You can't use intermediate level or low level. Sir, non-critical, non-critical, sir, LLDs are enough. Low level disinfectants are enough. Right, low level disinfectants are enough. Coming to the semi-critical. Sir, now here I want to highlight <laughs> when critical ke liye I have written HLDs and non-critical ke liye we have, I have written LLDs. Then students for semi-critical they write ILD. That is completely wrong concept. <laughs> Sir, for semi-critical also, semi-critical also, Spalding said we have to use HLDs, high level disinfectants. Sir, critical and semi-critical, in both the cases we have to use high level disinfectants. That is very, very important to remember. High level disinfectants we have to use for critical and also semi-critical. Sir, whereas non-critical, Sir, LLDs or ILDs, Anything can be used. Right? Anything can be used. Now we have to see in the question what they are asking. Sir, in the question they are asking semi-critical devices. See here, semi-critical devices are sterilized by which level disinfectant? Answer is a high level disinfectants. Right? Semi-critical by and most of you answered 
A, but few of you answered B also because I know where you get confused. Critical HLD, semi-critical, you think ILDs. <coughs> semi-critical, you think ILDs. Wrong answer. So critical and semi-critical, we have to go for HLDs. Non-critical, we have to go for ILDs or LLDs. Right? Hope you have understood. So this is the overall concept of Spalding's classification. This is complete concept of sterilization and disinfection. Sir, moving on to the next concept. So next concept which is very important in case of INACT is, sir, biosafety levels and one more bioterrorism agents, sir, very important. Sir, first we'll talk about the biosafety levels. So now this is a concept that is the concept what we are discussing now here is, sir, biosafety levels. Sir, biosafety level means what? Sir, biosafety level means what? Sir, bio means life. Life means what? Sir, in microbiology, life means microorganisms. Hai na? Safety, safety from microorganisms. Sir, when we being micro and my biologists, sir, when we handle microorganisms, we are at risk. We are we are getting exposed to the microorganisms. We may get infected accidentally while handling the microorganisms. That's why we have to follow safety measures. And we have to follow safety levels. And we have four biosafety levels. Biosafety level one, two, three, four. Sir, biosafety level 1 is used for non-pathogenic organisms. If we are handling, if we are handling non-pathogenic organisms, we go for biosafety level 1, right? And if you are handling pathogenic organisms, we have to go for 2, 3 and 4. We have to go for 2, 3 and 4. In biosafety level 2, we go for pathogenic organisms which causes mild to moderate disease. And you know, most of the organisms they called mild to moderate disease. Most of the organisms they cause mild to <coughs> moderate diseases. So the ones which cause a severe disease, we handle in biosafety level 3. Ones which cause a severe diseases associated with high mortality. Associated with high mortality. Mortality means, you know that in simple words, death rate, high death rate. Sir, we handle in biosafety level 4. Sir, very simple. Sir, 4 biosafety levels. Right, non-pathogenic organisms, biosafety level 1 is enough. Mild to moderate disease causing organisms, we require biosafety level 2. Severe disease causing organisms, we require biosafety level 3. Severe disease causing organisms associated with high mortality, we require biosafety level 4. Very simple. Okay, now. Sir, most of the organisms, they cause mild to moderate disease. Therefore, most of the organisms we handle at biosafety level 2. And biosafety level 2 is available in each and every lab and in each and every hospital. It should be there. It will be there. Otherwise, how can you perform the tests? How can you culture the organisms? You can't perform. Sir, we can't perform any test without biosafety level 2. We have to perform all the tests under biosafety level 2 because we have to handle organisms under biosafety level 2. Obviously, few tests are accepted to be performed without biosafety level 2 but most of the tests we require biosafety level 2 and biosafety level 2 will be there it should be there everywhere in each and every lab in each and every hospital and it is not that costlier also but if you talk about the biosafety level 3 and biosafety level 4 sir they are costlier they require a complete separate setup you can't place it inside a lab sir biosafety level 3 is a complete different setup right entry is different exit is different inner Three to four chambers should be there. Sir, it is a biosafety level three and biosafety level four. They are very big setup. They require very large space and they are very costlier. And they are rarely used. They are rarely used. Usually most of the diseases, uh, most of the diseases are mild to moderate and we handle under biosafety level two. Once you have understood this, now which are the most common organisms we handle under biosafety level two? Like I said, most of the organisms. Most of the organisms we handle under biosafety level 2. But still, sir, examples. Sir, examples means there are many organisms, no? But important examples, what we need to know in the exam, in the for, for the purpose of examination. In the examination, if they ask biosafety level 2, what are the organisms they ask? Sir, important organisms, what, what they ask? Sir, Vibrio and Salmonella. Vibrio and Salmonella. Vibrio and Salmonella. Rickettsia and Chlamydia. Rickettsia and Chlamydia, then Burkholderia. So these are the five important organisms what they ask in the exam. If they ask you have to answer biosafety level 2 because they cause mild to moderate diseases. Vibrio and Salmonella, Rickettsia and Chlamydia, Burkholderia are easy to remember. Coming to the severe diseases, 
many organisms they cause severe diseases but examination point of view important organisms to remember sir h1n1 and corona virus h1n1 and corona virus so severe disease associated with high mortality there are many important to remember sir nipa and ebola nipa and ebola right nipa and ebola sir non pathogenic examples important example for non pathogenic organisms sir there are many non pathogenic organisms you can remember non pathogenic e coli non pathogenic e coli sir these are the examples what they ask these are the examples what they ask they ask non pathogenic e coli which is the bio safe which is the bio safety level you have to opt answer is bio safety level 1 sir vibrio salmonella rickettsia chlamydia burkholderia what bio safety level you have to go for bio safety level 2 H1N1 virus and corona virus. Which bio safety level you are? Bio safety level three, right? Nipah and Ebola virus. Which bio safety level four? Because Nipah and Ebola they are associated with high mortality. There are many more examples, sir. If I write all the examples, you can't remember. If you remember this, that is not just enough. That is more than enough because ultimately we have to answer in the exam, right? We have to answer in the exam, sir. Once you have understood this, now coming to the oh, coming to one important point. What is that? sir we see many h1n1 cases we see many corona virus cases and we don't have bsl3 bio safety level 3 set up in each and every lab and in each and every hospital bio safety level 3 is very very rarely present in high institutes in high level national institutes like that in those types of institutes where national level institutes then tertiary level uh, care giving institutes in those kind of institutes we see bio safety level 3 but not in each and every institute and as bio safety level 3 is not widely present because of its cost space and many things involved right now what we do is for the h1 and corona viruses means organisms which require bio safety level 3 what we do is right what we do is severe disease severe disease causing organisms as we don't have bio safety level 2 what we do is so non culture non culture methods non culture methods and culture methods non culture methods and culture methods of the organisms that causes severe diseases that require bio safety level 2 which is not present everywhere that's why what we do is so non culture methods of those organisms that causes severe diseases we go for bio safety level 2 bio safety level 2 sir we can handle severe disease causing organism for example like h1n1 and corona virus we can handle under bio safety level 2 if the method is non culture method non culture method means other than culture man other than culture microscopy molecular methods like pcr immunological methods like elisa rapid test any test you perform for severe disease causing organisms we can perform in bio safety level 2 but if you want to perform culture methods we have to go for bio safety level 3 because culture means we are growing the live organisms right as you are growing the live organism there is a chance that you may get infected with a live organism therefore it is highly risky and that's why we require bio safety level 3 usually severe disease causing organisms severe diseases causing organisms we handle in bio safety level 3 as it is not available non culture methods we can handle in bio safety level 2 and culture methods we require bio safety level 3 so this is the concept sir why are you explaining this concept because very important for inct if they ask corona virus what bio safety level you follow right then you have to see the method what the examiner is asking is non culture or culture method <laughs> if the examiner is asking mentioning in the question culture of corona virus what bio safety level the answer is bio safety level 3 if the examiner has not mentioned culture if not mentioned culture means it is pcr or elisa or rapid test any other test other than culture sir bio safety level 2 this is the important point what you need to remember hope you have understood hope you have got the concept if you have not got the concept please because the this thing everywhere you will get but this part it is difficult to get everywhere and this part is important and this is what they ask in the exam right this is what they ask severe diseases causing organisms ka non culture methods we go for bio safety level 2 <coughs> and culture methods we go for bio safety level 3 because bio safety level 3 is not widely available and culture methods may we can't take the risk we have to go for bio safety level 3 if it is not there go for non culture methods use bio safety level 2 and identify the organisms but severe diseases associated with high mortality high mortality sir we require bio safety level 4 anyways this is the topic of bio safety level sir moving on to the next topic so harsh subham harsh 
Shubankar, sir, I would like to attend your classes even after I get a seat. <laughs> After getting, after once you get a seat, concentrate in your field. Do something great. <laughs> okay, now answer is. Okay, now answer. Yeah, answer. SARS-CoV-2 is classified under which biosafety level? SARS-CoV-2 is classified under which biosafety level? Sir, once they ask this, SARS-CoV-2 is classified under which biosafety level? Yes, the answer is biosafety level three. Year. Biosafety level three. Sir, they are not mentioning culture or non-culture method. They are asking SARS, coronavirus classified under which biosafety level? Answer is biosafety level 3. If they ask culture methods, biosafety level 3. Non-culture methods, biosafety level 2. If they just ask coronavirus comes under which biosafety level? Answer is biosafety level 3. Answer is biosafety. Coronavirus comes under, see I have written under biosafety level 3. Forget about this culture and non-culture method. Forget about this culture and non-culture method. If they, with this explanation, if they ask, then obviously, sir, it comes under biosafety. Sir, coronavirus comes under biosafety level 3 only. Coronavirus comes under biosafety because it was a severe disease. If they ask diagnostic methods of coronavirus comes under which biosafety level? Diagnostic methods. Non-cultural diagnostic methods, biosafety level 2. Cultural diagnostic methods, biosafety level 3. But if they just ask organism, coronavirus comes under which biosafety level? Answer is biosafety level 3. Hope there is no confusion. Sir, moving on to the next topic. The next topic, like I said, bioterrorism agent. The next topic is bioterrorism agents. This is the next topic. Sir, if you talk about the bioterrorism, first of, first of all, sir, what do you mean by bioterrorism? Like I said, bio means organisms, microorganisms. Terrorism is a war by using microorganisms. <laughs> sir, right? Earlier, we, we saw that two countries or two places, if they want to fight, they fight by using the swords. Swords. Horse ride and sword fight. After that came pistols and then so many gun machines and all of that bombs, right? Now the upcoming fights, if happen by chance, if a war happen between the countries, they release microorganisms, right, between the countries, so that people should get infected and they die. Ultimately, the main aim of the war is to kill the people. They use microorganisms to kill the people, and this is what is known as bioterrorism. And they use the organisms which can easily spread which can cause severe disease, usually which do not have treatment, usually which do not have vaccine, because ultimately their aim is to kill the people. And the agents which are used in the bio bioterrorism agent, in the bioterrorism, the agents which are used in the bioterrorism, sir, they are classified into three categories. Category A, bioterrorism agents, category B, bioterrorism agents, and category C, bioterrorism agents. A, B, C, bioterrorism agents. Now, category A bioterrorism agents, what they cause is the ones which causes severe disease, the ones which causes severe disease and which can easily spread. The organisms causing severe disease which can easily spread, these type of organisms, they come under category A. The ones which causes moderate disease, the ones which causes moderate disease and having moderate spread, moderate spread. They comes under category B, bioterrorism agents. Category C, sir, category C, they are somewhat similar to category A, bioterrorism agents. Category C, they are somewhat similar to category A. Sir, category A, which causes severe disease and the organisms causing severe disease and easily spreads, they comes under category A. If you talk about the category C, the ones which causes severe diseases and which are emerging diseases, not only the organisms causing severe diseases, the organisms which causes severe diseases, which are emerging diseases. Sir, what do you mean by emerging diseases? The diseases which keep on spreading and increasing in number at a very high rate. For example, right? we saw coronavirus pandemic, emerging disease. <coughs> Before that, we saw Nipah in Kerala, sir, emerging disease, Ebola not in India, outside the world, emerging disease, H1N1, few years back, emerging disease. So the diseases which occur, and they occur in very high number, high number, and they spread very fast, and they occur in very high number, these are emerging diseases. These are, for example, dengue is not emerging disease, because it is there since long, it is occurring at the almost same level every year. Chikungunya is not emerging disease, right, emerging disease. Earlier it was there, then it was not there. Now again it is occurring re-emerging disease. So the diseases which occur in very high number, these are emerging diseases, which can easily spread and easy to produce. Sir, what do you mean by easy to produce? 
organisms which can be easily produced means easily manufactured <coughs> manufactured sir how can we manufacture the organisms so better terminology is the organisms which can be easily bioengineered the organisms can easily bioengineered easily modify we can easily modify the genetic structure of the organisms organisms so these are the organisms which comes under category c of bioterrorism agents right now if you talk about the bioterrorism agents sir they are classified into three categories a b c category a bioterrorism agents are agents that causes severe disease and easily spreads category b agents which causes moderate disease and moderately spreads category c which causes severe disease which are emerging diseases easy to spread and easy to produce these are category c bioterrorism agents okay fine sir once you have understood this sir category a is most commonly asked and i remember with pneumonic bis i remember with pneumonic bis right there are many but important to remember for exam because all if you remember all you can't remember it is not possible to remember if you remember everything right the basic rule is remember the important things because that is possible to remember and we have to do whatever is possible not the impossible things sir so anyways coming to the category a agents i remember bys bis right b4 sir b4 bacillus anthracis which causes a disease anthrax s for yersinia y for yersinia pestis which causes a disease plague and s for smallpox virus right which causes a disease smallpox these are the three important bioterrorism agents which comes under category a sir category b moderate disease moderate spreads are moderate disease causing organisms sir vibrio and salmonella rickettsia and chlamydia vibrio and salmonella sir rickettsia and chlamydia and burkholderia sir there are many important to remember right which comes under category b sir category c sir category c sir severe disease emerging disease easy to spread easy to bioengineered sir h1n1 and corona virus h1n1 and corona virus sir nipa and ebola virus sir nipa and ebola virus these are the important examples to remember if they ask in the examination if they ask 99% chances they ask only one among these organisms only one among these organisms sir entire concept of bioterrorism agents now if you see the question in the question what they are asking smallpox is classified under which category sir smallpox comes under category a therefore answer is a category a right so three very very important questions for inct we have discussed here all are important no doubt in that but three very very important sir one is spalding's classification spalding's classification second is biosafety level biosafety level and third is bioterrorism agent sir why are you telling these are three very very important see other things whatever i have discussed you may get clear concept in many places but these three things very difficult to get the clear concept what is spalding classification right what do you mean by critical semi critical devices what do you mean by what what is, what is that what do you mean by biosafety levels what is the difference between biosafety levels and which organisms comes under which biosafety levels right what do you mean by bioterrorism agents what are the three types which three types these three types are based on what what type of organism comes under a b c how many organisms how many to remember how how many organisms you have to remember sir all these are very difficult you won't get everywhere you won't get everywhere so with that moving on to the next topic sir the next topic is moving on to the immunology sir so far whatever we have discussed we discussed from general microbiology which is a very very important for inct and all the important i am not included everything like i said we are discussing pyqs previous year questions that too important important obviously i am not telling these are the only important things but these are must read and go topics so with that coming to the immunology in immunology very important topic is immunity immunity the first topic immunity is very important if you see this question a person bitten by a mite developed rickets cell infection which type of immune response is the major immune response mounted in this case that's the question that's the question now if you see sir immunity if you see the immunity let let's talk about the immunity here itself here the topic is immunity the topic is immunity sir immunity you know that immunity is nothing but defense system of our body to fight against the organisms defense system of our body to fight against the organisms to fight against the organisms all right to fight against the organisms and you know that we have two types of immunity we have two types of immunity sir innate immunity and acquired immunity 
innate immunity and acquired immunity innate immunity and acquired immunity sir innate immunity is a minor immunity minor immunity and in acquired immunity is the major immunity acquired immunity is the major immunity sir t cells b cells t cells b cells antibodies they are involved in acquired immunity they are not involved in innate immunity and innate immunity is present since birth it is present since birth and that's why it will act in 3 to 4 hours that's why it will act in 3 to 4 hours acquired immunity is acquired after the entry of organism it is acquired after the entry of organism that's why it require 5 to 7 days to act so there are many important differences between innate and acquired immunity but what is needed for entrance examination to answer innate and acquired immunity the uh, these are the important differences what we need to know sir innate immunity is a minor immunity acquired immunity is a major immunity there are no in, there is no involvement of t cell b cell and antibodies in innate immunity t cell b cell and antibodies are involved only in acquired immunity sir innate immunity is present since birth that's why it will act very fast it will act it will act in 3 to 4 hours and acquired immunity is acquired after the entry of organism that's why it will take 5 to 7 days for the action there are many other differences but these are the important differences sir so based on that if you see the question a person bitten by a mite developed rickets cell infection which type of immune response is major immune response they are asking major immune response i will rule out innate because i told you innate is a minor immune response when innate is ruled out the answer should be acquired the answer should be acquired but if i see acquired sir here there are three options sir <coughs> passive acquired active acquired active acquired in active acquired we have cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity sir passive acquired means sir passive acquired means direct entry of antibody without the entry of organism direct entry of antibody without the entry of organism that is passive acquired active acquired means sir entry of antigen then body producing the antibody active acquired means antigen enters body produces antibody that is active acquired <coughs> that is active acquired passive acquired means organism will not enter antigen will not enter direct antibody will enter sir if direct antibody is entering passive acquired if antigen is entering and body producing antibody that is active acquired here if you see rickets cell infection rickets cell infection means rickets cell is entering rickets cell is entering means organism is entering organism is entering means antigen is entering passive acquired immunity is ruled out passive acquired immunity is ruled out because organism is entering organism contains antigens and once organism enters our body produces antibodies therefore infection infection is active acquired immunity infection is active acquired immunity innate is ruled out because the question mentions major because innate is minor passive acquired immunity is ruled out because organism is entering not antibody if antibody would have entered if antibody would have entered then it is passive organism enter in the question is cell mediated or humoral cell mediated or humoral sir for that we need to understand one thing what is that sir acquired immunity may we have cell mediated and humoral immunity humoral means antibody mediated immunity right humoral immunity is also known as ami antibody mediated immunity sir cell mediated immunity act against intracellular organisms cell mediated immunity act against intracellular organisms and humoral immunity act against extracellular organisms it act against extracellular organisms right so now we have to see whether rickets is intracellular or extracellular if rickets is intracellular answer is cell mediated if it is extracellular answer is humoral so rickets is intracellular organism that's why the answer is option c acquired immunity cmi cell mediated because rickets is intracellular organisms organism so this is the answer to this question answer to this question coming to the concept very important concept in inct what is that sir very important concept is acquired immunity we need to know everything about acquired immunity sir if you talk about the mechanism of acquired immunity what happens sir once the organism enters i told you organism consists of antigens and there are many antigens these all orange color ones are antigens antigens this organism is taken by this organism is taken by 
antigen presenting cells apcs means antigen presenting cells sir antigen presenting cells will take these organisms for example which are the antigen presenting cells sir dendritic cells dendritic cells are the most common antigen presenting cells which takes the organism process the antigen and they present the antigen to t cells and they present the antigen to t cells sir mainly we have two types of t cells cd8 t cells and cd4 t cells sir mainly we have two types of t cells cd8 and cd4 t cells right and these t cells they have <coughs> t cell receptor they have t cell receptor tcr means t cell receptor so antigen presenting cells <coughs> they take the antigen from the organism and they present the antigen to t cells that's why they are known as antigen presenting cells because they are presenting the antigen to whom they present they present the antigen to t cells from whom they will take the antigen from the organisms from the organisms and they give it to t cell receptor of the t cells and t cell receptor is there in on both the t cells because both are t cells <laughs> right now this antigen presenting cells they give antigen presenting cells they give the antigen to t cells with the help of mhc receptor with the help of mhc receptor so we have two types of mhc receptors mhc1 and mhc2 we have two types of mhc receptors mhc1 and mhc2 and remember this point which is very very important <coughs> what is that sir mhc1 receptor always gives antigen to t cell receptor of cd8 t cell never to cd4 and mhc2 receptor always give the antigen to t cell receptor of cd4 t cell never to cd8 this is what is known as mhc restriction what is msc restriction msc1 receptor give antigen only to cd8 t cell msc2 receptor give antigen only to cd4 t cell now antigen is given if antigen is given right t cells will get activated or not answer is no t cells will not get activated t cells to get activated t cells to get activated so there is one more receptor which should get activated what is that sir antigen presenting cells they are also having one more receptor b7 receptor antigen presenting cells have one more receptor b7 receptor and t cells are having one more receptors cd28 receptor these are core receptors these are core receptors sir b7 has to bind to cd28 b7 has to bind to cd28 cd28 sir first of all main receptors main signal main signal is between msc receptor of antigen presenting cells and t cell receptors of t cells that is the main receptor co receptor signal is b7 molecule of antigen presenting cells and cd8 to cd28 of t cells so two signals major receptor signal minor receptor signal major receptor signal and minor receptor signal sir third signal interleukins interleukin 1 is involved in activating cd4 interleukin 2 is involved in activating cd8 so this topic is very important three signals activate the t cells which are the three signals which can activate the t cells one is main signal that is msc receptor and t cell receptor co signal b7 molecule and cd28 receptor and interleukin signal interleukin 2 and interleukin 1 interleukin 1 for cd4 interleukin 2 for cd8 easy to remember One comes first, two comes next, four comes first, eight comes next. Next, therefore, interleukin one is for CD4 and uh, interleukin two for CD8. Sir, once T cells are activated, once T cells are activated, activated CD8 T cells, activated CD4 T cells, activated CD4 T cells. Right, sir, CD8 cells are activated. They causes lysis of organism. because they are cytotoxic they are toxic to the cells they are toxic to the organisms they lyse the organism but cd4 cells you know that they are not cytotoxic they are helper t cells they are helper t cells so once cd4 cells are activated they get they get converted converted into th1 cd4 or th2 cd4 cells th1 cd4 or th2 cd4 so for cd4 t cell to get converted into cd th1 cd4 interleukin 12 12 is required remember interleukin 12 for th2 cd4 interleukin 4 and 5 are required 
all these things are important three signals to activate t cells very important and the cytokines involved in acquired immunity very important which cytokines involved which interleukins are involved very very important interleukin 12 converts cd4 to th1 cd4 interleukin 4 and 5 convert t cd4 to th2 cd4 and then this th1 cd4 further produces interleukin 2 interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor alpha and this th2 cd4 right it activates b cells it activates b cells when b cells are activated they become plasma cells and plasma cells produces antibodies plasma cells produces antibodies so whatever i have explained here is very very important for inict most commonly repeated and students they struggle to remember Right, I will explain here what to remember. Very simple. So three signals, three signals for T cell activation. Most commonly asked. Three signals for T cell activation. Right. In that, remember one is main signal, second is co-signal. One is main signal, second is co-signal, third is cytokine signal. Third is cytokine signal. Sir, main signal is always between MSC receptor and T cell receptor. But what you need to remember is MSC1 always give to T cell receptor of CD8. MSC2 always give to T cell receptor of CD4. Co signal is always between B7 and 28. No difference. B7 of APC, CD28 of CD8 and CD4. And cytokine signal, interleukin 1 for CD4, interleukin 2 for CD8. And these three signals, they activate they activate what so they activate t cells sir so once t cells are activated then what you need to know is cytokines involved cytokines involved if you talk about the cytokines involved right i will round off, round off all the cytokines which are involved here interleukin 1 is involved in activation of cd4 interleukin 2 is involved in activation of cd8 interleukin 12 is involved right in the formation of th1 cd4 Interleukin 4 and 5 are involved in formation of TH2 CD4. And for the TH1 CD4 produces three cytokines, interleukin 2, interferon gamma, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Tumor necrosis factor alpha. Sir, these things are very important. Hope you have understood. Again, nowhere the concept will be clear. I have cleared the concept here and what to remember that also I have told. Sir, one thing is three signals involved, next cytokines involved. In acquired immunity, next how to opt between innate and acquired immunity, then cell mediated and humoral immunity, then active and passive acquired immunity. So everything, entire concept of immunity here. So these are the things what they ask in the <coughs> exam from immunity. Sir, so once we are done with the immunity or immunology, so moving on to the next question. Sir, so next question from bacterial infections. Right, bacterial infections. See the question. A patient presented with complaints of breathlessness. Breathlessness, sir. Breathlessness means lung is involved. Lung is involved. Pneumonia. Breathlessness, re at rest, cough, and right sided chest pain since 15 days. She had completed successful ATT for 8 years. ATT means anti tuberculous treatment. Patient has taken anti tuberculosis treatment 8 years ago. ATT has taken 8 years ago because patient had TB and patient completed entire course of anti tubercular treatment 8 years ago. And was again advised advised ATT for her current condition. For current condition, again they told start anti tuberculous drugs. They telling after eight years again you have got TB. Start again anti tuberculous drugs. On chest radiograph there was a right sided non homogeneous opacity with air fluid levels and with left lung mid zone infiltrates. Sputum examination showed the findings as given in the B. Sputum examination showed the findings as given in the figure B. So here we have three figures A, B, C. See, this is A, this is B, this is C. If you see all the three figures, sir, first thing is, sir, this is acid fast staining. Acid fast staining. How many questions we are discussing? 20 questions. 20 questions. Sir, acid fast staining, which is also known as ZN staining. 
acid for staining which is also known as ZN staining because pink color organisms against blue color background pink color organisms against blue color background sir acid for staining sir in the acid for staining if you see the organisms pink color pink color non filamentous like this see pink color non filamentous mycobacterium tuberculosis pink color organisms arranged in groups see here arranged in groups pink color organisms arranged in groups sir mycobacterium leprae arranged in groups mycobacterium leprae we call it as globi cigar bundle appearance and pink color organisms right which are filamentous see long filamentous sir nocardia right very important sir mycobacterium tuberculosis pink color non filamentous non filamentous means they are not very long if pink color filamentous nocardia nocardia are pink color and filamentous and pink color arranged in groups sir mycobacterium leprae mycobacterium leprae now they are telling sir sputum examination revealed showed the findings as in the figure b figure b shows nocardia the answer is nocardia with that the topic is acid fast organisms acid fast bacteria the topic is acid how to identify acid fast bacteria and acid fast staining right very easy sir pink color non filamentous mycobacterium tuberculosis pink color arranged in groups mycobacterium leprae sir pink color filamentous sir nocardia answer is nocardia done right actinomyces is non acid fast actinomyces is non acid fast you know how to identify mycobacterium tuberculosis leprae and nocardia <coughs> actinomyces is non acid fast only these are the acid fast bacteria sir moving on to the next question sir the next question a sex worker sir sex worker means they are talking about sexually transmitted infection sir here the topic is sexually transmitted infection sir next topic what discuss what we are discussing sexually transmitted infection developed a red beefy painless ulcer on the genital area sir in the sexual transmitted infection we are talking about <coughs> genital ulcerative disease we are talking about genital ulcerative diseases <coughs> right genital ulcerative diseases diseases associated with genital ulcers <coughs> sir we have four important bacterial diseases four important bacterial diseases that produces genital ulcers and those four are given here granuloma inguinale lymphogranuloma venerum syphilis and chancroid sir granuloma inguinale is caused by the bacteria klebsiella granulomatis klebsiella granulomatis lymphogranuloma venerum is caused by the bacteria chlamydia trachomatis and sir syphilis is caused by the bacteria tryponema pallidum tryponema pallidum and sir chancroid is caused by the bacteria haemophilus ducreae these are the four bacteria which causes genital ulcer and these are the names of the diseases klebsiella granulomatis causing a disease granuloma inguinale produces genital ulcer produces genital ulcer and all of them they produce genital ulcer and these are the four bacteria which causes genital ulcer but here what we need to remember is here what we need to remember is so this genital ulcer of klebsiella granulomatis is red and beefy it is red and beefy lymphogranuloma venerum genital ulcer is not red and beefy syphilis genital ulcer is very hard and haemophilus ducreae genital ulcer is very soft very soft so the next thing is granul klebsiella granulomatis genital ulcer it bleeds on touch and haemophilus ducreae ulcer also bleeds on touch right whereas tryponema pallidum and chlamydia trachomatis they do not bleed on touch they do not bleed on touch sir all of them are associated with buboes except klebsiella granulomatis which is associated with pseudo buboes klebsiella granulomatis associated with pseudo buboes other than that all of them are associated with buboes all of them are associated with buboes buboes means enlarged lymph nodes 
दे आर प्रेजेंट इन ऑल एक्सेप्ट क्लेप्सिल ग्रामिस सर ऑल ऑफ देम आर पेनलेस ऑल ऑफ देम आर पेनलेस एक्सेप्ट हिमोफ्लस डुक्रे विच इज पेनफुल All of them are painless, except hemophilus ducreae, which is painful. Sir, very simple method to remember. Sir, so what is the simple method to remember? I will tell you here. Right, remember the first one. Remember the first one and the last one. Remember the first one and the last one. Sir, why? Because the all the positive findings goes with first one and last one. If you remember all the four, you will get confused. If you remember first one and last one, it is very easy. You will not get confused. Sir, Klebsiella granulomatis bleeds on touch, and Hemophilus ducreae also bleeds. Sir, sir, first one and last one they bleed on touch, and only first one is having pseudo bubos, and only the last one is painful. <coughs> sir, this is what we have to remember, right? Only first one and last one they bleed on touch. Klebsiella granulomatis and Hemophilus ducreae they bleed on touch, and only Klebsiella granulomatis is having pseudo bubos, and only Hemophilus ducreae is ulcer is painful. Because remaining all they have pubos, remaining all they are painless. Very simple, sir. Now, if you see the question, a sex worker developed red beefy genital ulcer, sir. Red beefy genital ulcer. See here, genital ulcer which bleeds on touch, pseudo pubos, sir. Red B. See what are the findings they have given? Red beefy genital ulcer bleeds on touch, pseudo pubos. So many points given to answer it as answer is granuloma, granuloma inguinal. Again, I got two different types of answers. Yes, few of you answered A, few of you answered B. The answer is A, granuloma inguinal. The answer is A, granuloma inguinal. Right? Hope you got the answer. Right? Hope you got the answer. Sir, moving on to the next topic. Sir, next topic is from virology. Sir, from virology in INS set, I am telling you in INS set, I am telling you, images of the viruses are very important. Directly we will ask the images. or they frame the question in which in which they will give the image as an identification point otherwise they ask the life cycles in which you have to identify the images right and important viruses what they ask are the viruses which are having special characteristic shape the viruses which are having special characteristic shape these are the viruses most commonly asked special characteristic shape that we discuss in this question question number 12 and what they ask is the viruses which are having segmented nucleic acid the viruses which are having segmented nucleic acid and these are the second most important viruses what they ask that we discuss in this question question number 13 question number 13 right so two questions 12 and 13 regarding how to identify the viruses question number 12 we concentrate on how to identify the viruses based on the shape of the virus and here characteristic shape of the virus and here we identify the virus based on the segments of nucleic acid so now if you see the shape of the virus here right if you see the shape of the virus here so this first one it looks like <coughs> satellite shape the first one it looks like satellite shape satellite shape satellite shape second one look like brick shape it is like a brick third one is filamentous filamentous in shape it is like a filament filamentous in shape so this one is like a crown shape virus crown shape this is bullet shape bullet shape virus right so satellite shape because adenovirus this this satellite shape is because of this long antenna like receptors long antenna like receptors giving the satellite shape to the adenovirus so this is crown shape because if you see the receptors the receptors are like flower petals right the receptors are like flower petal see here a flower petal shape receptor see here just imagine a virus round virus surrounded by flower petals flower petals and you just take it and put it on your head it appear like a crown all right sir so most of the viruses they are round in shape they are round in shape most of the viruses but they are not crown shape because the receptors are not flower petal like flower petal like receptors they are present only on one virus and that's why which gives crown shape to the virus and it this it appears like bullet shape now this is the electron microscopy picture in which if you see the virus sir virus is having spoke like virus having spoke like projections spokes like 
साइकिल टायर स्पोक्स कार्ट व्हील स्पोक्स सर कार्ट व्हील अपियरेंस व्हील ऑफ द कार्ट इट अपियर लाइक अ व्हील ऑफ द कार्ट कार्ट व्हील अपियरेंस सो दीज आर द स्पेशल शेप्स व्हाट वी नीड टू रिमेंबर राइट सिक्स इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेशल शेप ऑफ द वायरस स्पेशल शेप्स ऑफ द वायरसेस सिक्स इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेशल शेप्स कैरेक्टरिस्टिक शेप्स ऑफ द वायरसेस सैटेलाइट शेप ब्रिक शेप फिलामेंटस शेप क्राउन शेप बुलेट शेप एंड कार्ट व्हील शेप नो सैटेलाइट शेप सर द वायरस इज अडिनो वायरस ब्रिक शेप द वायरस इज पॉक्स वायरस फिलामेंटस शेप द वायरस इज इबोला वायरस सर क्राउन शेप द वायरस इज कोरोना वायरस सर बुलेट शेप द वायरस इज रेबीज वायरस and cartwheel shape the virus is rota virus six important viruses having characteristic shape in front of you <coughs> six important viruses which you have to identify by seeing the characteristic shape of the virus satellite shape adeno virus brick shape pox virus filamentous shape ebola virus crown shape corona virus bullet shape sir rabies virus cartwheel shape sir rota virus now if you see the question identify the virus in the figure d sir figure d where is the figure d sir figure d is here crown shape answer is d corona virus answer is d corona virus so next we going to the next important question sir identifying the viruses based on segmented nucleic acid sir only four viruses have segmented nucleic acid only four viruses have segmented nucleic acid we remember with mnemonic rabo r a b o rabo rabo sir r for sir r for rabdo viruses A for arena viruses, B for bunia viruses, W for ortho mixo viruses. Important example for rabdo virus, rabdo viruses. Sir, rabies virus is an important example for rabdo viruses. <coughs> important example for arena virus. Sir, Lassa fever virus is an important example for arena virus. Important example for bunia viruses. Sir, hanta virus. and ccf virus are the important example for ccf means crimean congo fever virus bunia viruses ortho mixo virus sir influenza virus is an important example for ortho mixo virus so these are the four viruses which are having segmented nucleic acid their nucleic acid is segmented divided into number of pieces small small pieces how many segments that is also important sir highest segments with rabdo viruses 11 segments 11 segments so then arena bunia ortho mixo a b o we have to remember with the increasing order 2 3 8 8 segments 2 3 eight segments arena viruses two segments bunia viruses three segments and ortho mixo viruses eight segments so done sir viruses having segmented nucleic acid rabdo viruses like rabies virus 11 segmented nucleic acid arena viruses like lassa fever virus two segmented nucleic acid bunia viruses like hanta virus and ccf virus three segmented nucleic acid ortho mixo viruses like influenza virus are eight segmented nucleic acid now if you see the viruses here right so this the first one is having 11 segments count the segments number of segments of nucleic acid see here if you count sir 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 segments and if you see here so this one green color one circle and this is another circle so two segments arena arena sir here three circles three circles three segments sir bunia bunia if you count the segments here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 sir eight segments is ortho mixo sir rabo virus sir a b o rabo virus count the number of segments identify the virus rabo virus rabdo arena bunia and ortho mixo virus and in the question what they are asking is identify the figure c and figure c is this it is having three segments three segments means bunia virus examples for bunia virus is hanta and ccf therefore hanta virus is the answer c is the answer c is the answer hanta virus okay one second there is one small confusion here sorry for that confusion is cleared by shobit this is not rabdo sorry this is not rabdo sir rio viruses sorry rio viruses rio viruses consists of rota virus i'm sorry for that that is not rabdo that is rio or for rio viruses consists of rota virus having 11 segments 
राइट रैपडो वायरस रैपडो वायरस रेबीज वायरस बुलेट शेप रैपडो वायरस रेबीज वायरस इज हैविंग बुलेट शेप इट इज नॉट हैविंग सेगमेंटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड इट इज नॉट हैविंग सेगमेंटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड सर सेगमेंटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड इज सीन विद रियो रियो वायरसेस कंसिस ऑफ रोटा वायरस राइट आंसर थैंक यू फॉर क्लियरिंग द स्मॉल मिस्टेक व्हिच हैज हैपेंड राइट रियो वायरसेस सर विदर दिस इज द क्वेश्चन मूविंग दिस इज अबाउट आइडेंटिफाइंग द वायरसेस सर आइडेंटिफाइंग द वायरसेस बेस्ड ऑन देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक शेप एंड आइडेंटिफाइंग द वायरसेस बेस्ड ऑन द सेगमेंटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अगेन नो वेर यू गेट दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन टू आइडेंटिफाई द वायरसेस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सी टी तो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एट दीज थिंग्स सी इन 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 दिस पी वाई क्यू सेशन फ्यू थिंग्स हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन इन वे रैपिड रिविजन फॉर नीट रैपिड रिविजन फॉर नीट बट मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स वॉट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग हियर इज विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सेट बट फ्यू थिंग्स हैव टेकन फ्रॉम नीट ऑल्सो बिकॉज दीज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सेट मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सीट दैन नीट दो हैव डिस्कस इन नीट सेशन दीज आर मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सी टी दैन नीट सेशन राइट एस्पेशली दीज वायरस एस्पेशली दिज विच आर हैविंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक शेप एंड हैविंग सेगमेंटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन एस सी टी सर मूव द नेक्स्ट सर द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज कंप्लीटली बेस्ड ऑन ह्यूमन पेपिलोमा वायरस human papilloma why no sorry yeah no the next topic if you see here yeah the next topic is based on vaccine sir vaccine is a very very important topic <coughs> very very important topic here you see young female patient suffering from condyloma acuminata which has a low risk of cervical cancer advise to take the vaccine vaccine consists of sir condyloma acuminata is a disease what is condyloma acuminata sir condyloma acuminata Condyloma acuminata is nothing but anogenital warts. Anogenital warts caused by human papilloma virus. Six and eleven serotypes. Human papilloma virus. Six and eleven serotypes. You know that already, right? Six and eleven serotypes. And these six and eleven serotypes. which causes condyloma acuminata they also have low risk for cervical cancer they can cause cervical cancer but very low, very low risk very low risk and the serotypes which are having high risk of cervical cancer is human papilloma virus 6 16 and 18 <coughs> so 16 and 18 they do not cause condyloma acuminata but they have high risk of cervical cancer they have high risk for cervical cancer whatever it is ultimately we are talking about <coughs> vaccine of human papilloma virus sir vaccine of human papilloma virus vaccine of human papilloma virus is a subunit vaccine subunit means recombinant vaccine recombinant vaccine sir what do you mean by sub unit or recombinant vaccine as the name suggests sub unit means one small unit of the organism is there in the vaccine not the entire organism which sub unit of the organism is present in the vaccine answer is l1 antigen is present l1 antigen is present in the vac l1 antigen of human papilloma virus is present in the vaccine of human papilloma virus or human papilloma virus vaccine therefore answer is l1 antigen so this is the question but coming to the concept sir l1 antigen is present inside the vaccine it is a vaccine antigen of human papilloma virus e6 and e7 genes are proto onco genes of human papilloma virus which are responsible for cervical cancer sir very important most commonly repeated which are the proto onco genes of human papilloma virus proto onco genes of human papilloma virus causing cervical cancer e6 and e7 which is the antigen present in the vaccine l1 antigen never forget once i have mentioned it i want to cover all the recombinant vaccines which are approved so far to use recombinant vaccines means subunit vaccines so three important recombinant vaccines are subunit vaccines which we need to remember hbv hpv and corona virus vaccines 
right hepatitis b virus hbv means hepatitis b virus hbs antigen that is the subunit what we use in preparing the recombinant vaccine l1 antigen of human papilloma virus is used in preparing the human papilloma virus vaccine S antigen of coronavirus is used to prepare the coronavirus vaccines. Such examples for recombinant vaccines. Three important recombinant vaccines you need to remember and which is the antigen we use in those vaccines. Very important. <coughs> Very important. Sir, other than recombinant vaccines, we have live vaccines and killed vaccines. We have live vaccines and killed vaccines. <coughs> if you talk about the live vaccines, sir, very important point to remember is live vaccines are contraindicated in immunocompromised condition. They are contraindicated in immunocompromised condition and pregnancy. Pregnancy, that is the first thing. And there are many live vaccines, but one important live vaccine, what we need to remember is Japanese encephalitis virus live vaccine. Sir, Japanese encephalitis virus live vaccine is prepared by using SA1442 strain of Japanese encephalitis virus is used in preparing the live vaccine of Japanese encephalitis virus which is taken by a subcutaneous route which is taken via subcutaneous route. They will ask which strain of the Japanese encephalitis virus is used in preparing the live vaccine of Japanese encephalitis virus and taken via which route. Right? And very important vaccine, that is what they ask. Right? These are the few important points what you need to know regarding vaccines. There are many more, but we can't discuss everything here. Sir, with one question, I have given you the most important things what we need to know regarding vaccines. <coughs> so I have covered human papilloma virus here in this question. I have covered recombinant vaccines in this question and I have given one important live vaccine in this question. Right? Regarding that what and all they ask and what is very important to remember. Right? This is about the vaccine. Moving on to the next question. Sir, if you talk about the next question. Sir, the next topic is based on, the topic is based on congenital infections. Sir, very very important for INACT, congenital infections. Right, very very important for INICT, congenital infections. And you know that congenital infections we remember with a pneumonic torch. Congenital infections we remember with a pneumonic torch. You know that T for toxoplasma, <coughs> R for rubella virus, C for cytomegalovirus, H for <coughs> herpes virus, O for, sir, O for others. Others means there are many more which comes under this. Many more which comes under this. Others. Right. Now let's talk about one by one. First we'll talk about the toxoplasma. First we'll talk about toxoplasma. Sir, a child suffering from toxoplasma. What are the important points we need to notice? Sir, one is chorioretinitis. Chorioretinitis in the eye. Hydrocephalus in the brain hydrocephalus in the brain and diffuse calcification in the brain diffuse calcification in the brain this is about toxoplasma that is first toxoplasma is over moving under the rubella sir moving under the rubella sir in the rubella what we see is cataract in the eye sensory neural hearing loss in the ear Patent ductus arteriosus in the heart. So this is about rubella. Sir, moving on to the cytomegalovirus. <coughs> Sir, cytomegalovirus we see. Right, cytomegalovirus we see. Chorioretinitis. Chorioretinitis. IUGR. Oh, sorry, one second, one second. IUGR. Microcephaly. IUGR, microcephaly and periventricular calcification. Periventricular calcifications. Periventricular calcifications. So this is about cytomegalovirus. So moving on to the next herpes. Congenital herpes virus infection. Sir, what do we see? Sir, we see vesicles. We see vesicles. Sir, clinical manifestations in the baby suffering from these congenital infections. Toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, torch. 
among others sir among others there are many that comes but important sir important are <coughs> right important are varicella zoster virus varicella zoster virus where you see psychiatrization that is skin scars psychiatrization skin scars and limb hypoplasia limb hypoplasia means short limbs short limbs varicella zoster virus sir parvo virus right sir parvo virus sir what do we see in parvo virus is non immune fetal high drops <coughs> non immune fetal high drops sir zika virus zika virus what do you see is microcephaly so there are many more congenital infections but these are important see complete slide on important congenital infections sir in this also what is very very important to remember that i will highlight here sir toxoplasma very important is hydrocephalus and diffuse calcification sir rubella what is important is cataract and patent ductus arteriosus cytomegalovirus what is important is periventricular calcifications sir remaining to sir very one one sir herpes vesicles varicella zoster virus psychiatrization and limb hypoplasia and parvo virus sir non immune fetal high drops sir zika virus sir microcephaly presentations of important clean congenital infections congenital infection very very important topic for ins set right like this again only important congenital infections and important presentations in one place again you won't get anywhere right with this now come to this question sir a baby a baby born to a mother with scarring on the skin that is psychiatrization short limbs that is limb hypoplasia right psychiatrization and short limbs see answer is varicella zoster virus answer is varicella zoster virus varicella zoster virus but options is not having varicella zoster virus option option is having hsv1 hsv2 hhv3 means human herpes virus 3 hhv4 means human herpes virus 4 sir human herpes virus 3 is varicella zoster virus human herpes virus 4 is epstein barr virus therefore answer is option c varicella zoster virus answer is option c sir varicella zoster virus can hydrocephalus taken as microcephaly hydrocephalus can't be taken as microcephaly these are two complete entity man these are two complete entity they, we can't take we can't take these are two complete entity we can't take we can't take see microcephaly is seen in many places but important places where we see microcephaly is zika virus and cytomegalovirus zika virus and cytomegalovirus therefore the answer is option c because we see psychiatrization and limb hypoplasia that is skin scarring and short limbs congenital infection very important topic sir moving on to the next topic sir with that moving on to the parasitology in parasitology you know that we have two types of parasites protozoa and helminths we have two types of parasites protozoa and helminths coming to the protozoa sir in the protozoa the very important topic what we are discussing here is acid fast protozoa acid fast protozoa sir acid fast protozoa means the protozoa which appear pink in color on acid fast staining and what are we seeing here is sir acid fast cis of the protozoa are seen acid fast cis of the protozoa are seen <coughs> and if you notice here sir these are pink color cis which are round in shape small in size these are pink color cis which are round in shape and big in size these are oval shapes cis which are much bigger in size sir what am i trying to tell i am trying to tell sir round in shape very important point here notice round in shape small in size means 4 to 5 micron in size second round in shape big in size big is means double the size double the size means double of 4 to 5 is 8 to 10 micron 8 to 10 micron then oval in shape triple the size triple of 8 is 8 3 is 24 right 25 to 30 micron 
<coughs> right acid fast is round in shape small in size small in size means 4 to 5 micron cryptosporidium cryptosporidium acid fast is round in shape 8 to 10 micron cyclospora acid fast oval in shape 25 to 30 micron cysto isospora cysto isospora <coughs> that symbols are identified so first one is cryptosporidium second one is cyclospora third one is cysto isospora these are the only three acid fast protozoa that means all the three they appear pink in color how to identify round in shape small in size 4 to 5 micron cryptosporidium round in shape big in size 8 to 10 micron cyclospora oval in shape much bigger in size 25 to 30 micron are cysto isospora now if you see the question what they're asking identify the one which is given in the figure c figure c is this this one is oval in shape 25 to 30 micron much bigger in size the answer is cysto isospora sir the answer is option c cysto isospora Right, acid fast protozoa, very important topic for INACT. Right, moving on to the next question, question number 17. <coughs> Sir, organisms, intracellular organisms, intracellular organisms within macrophages, <coughs> intracellular organisms within macrophages, again, very important topic for INACT. Intracellular organisms present within the macrophages. If here, if you see, sir, all these are macrophages. Means, where are the macrophages? Sir, this is the macrophage here. And what is this? This is the nucleus of the macrophage. This is the macrophage here. And this is the nucleus of the macrophage. This is the macrophage here. And this is the nucleus of the macrophage. Sir, all these are macrophages. And organisms are present within the macrophages. And these are different organisms, guys. These are different organisms. So, right? First organism is, first organism is parasite. Right? First organism is a parasite. Second organism is a fungus. Second organism is a fungus. Third organism is a bacteria. Right? All the three are present with the macrobia. First one is parasite. Second one is fungus. Third one is bacteria. Sir, which parasite which is present in the macrophages? A mastigoid form of a mastigoid form of leishmania. Leishmania is a parasite that is present within the macrophages. Leishmania. A mastigoid form of leishmania. Sir, which fungus is present inside the macrophage? We have only one intracellular fungus, which is that histoplasma. We have only one intracellular fungus, histoplasma. Sir, which bacteria is present within the macrophage? Sir, Klebsiella. Klebsiella is a bacteria which is present within the macrophage. Sir, first one is Leishmania, second one is histoplasma, third one is Klebsiella. The question is, sir, how to identify? How to identify? Right to identify, right? I will draw the pictures here so that you can identify. Other it is very, otherwise it is very difficult. That these consider these are macrophages and these are the nucleus of macrophages. <coughs> nucleus of macrophages. First thing we'll take the first one, which is that parasite Leishmania. Sir, so, Leishmania they are round in shape. Leishmania they are round in shape. This is round round shape Leishmania. Along with that, you see a small round here. You see a small round here. So this bigger round, this bigger round is Leishmania. Leishmania in the A mastigoid form. Leishmania in the A mastigoid form. This small round is kinetoplast. This small round is kinetoplast. Sir, kinetoplast is present only in one organism, Leishmania. Kinetoplast is present in only one organism, Leishmania. If you see small rounds associated with big rounds within the macrophages, sir, Leishmania done, that small round is kinetoplast. That small round is kinetoplast. If you see this, 
second one which is the second one fungus histoplasma second one fungus histoplasma sir histoplasma these round cells are histoplasma these round cells are histoplasma right and this histoplasma consists of cytoplasm which is cytoplasm which is compressed compressed cytoplasm because the cytoplasm is compressed shrinked there is a vacuole or halo seen within the histoplasma sir these are e cells e cells of histoplasma <coughs> e cells of histoplasma with contracted cytoplasm how will you come to know cytoplasm is contracted or not because i am seeing a halo inside why i am seeing why i am seeing halo inside because the cytoplasm is contracted because the cytoplasm is contracted e cell of histoplasma with contracted cytoplasm sir histoplasma <coughs> now coming to the third one sir within the macrophage what am i seeing bacteria what is the bacteria klebsiella sir if you talk about this bacteria klebsiella here klebsiella here if you talk about this bacteria sir klebsiella when we stain with methylene blue stain that is bipolar staining sir klebsiella will get stained only at the poles klebsiella will get stained only at the poles because it gets stained only at the poles it look like safety pin sir safety pin appearance on bipolar staining safety pin appearance on bipolar staining within macrophages klebsiella there are many other organisms that show safety pin appearance on safety pin appearance means only poles will get stained not the entire bacilli if only poles are stained the entire thing appear like a safety pin the entire thing appear like a safety pin so safety pin appearance or bipolar staining many other organisms they show safety pin appearance or bipolar staining but they are not intracellular they are not with they present within the macrophages safety pin appearance within the macrophages confirmed it is klebsiella confirmed it is klebsiella right Com confirmed it is klebsiella and this entire thing this entire thing which entire thing sir safety pin appearance within macrophages is known as donovan bodies donovan bodies sir this entire thing which entire thing leishmania within macrophages is known as ld bodies that is leishmania donovan bodies <coughs> and histoplasma there is nothing no body right so these are the things this is how we have to identify now if you see see clear cut you can identify now you can understand these images sir within the macrophage now here you can see round cells with small small rounds those are kinetoplasts this is leishmania see here rounds with contracted cytoplasm you see halo inside the yeast cells contracted cytoplasm histoplasma Now you see macrophages with bipolar staining showing safety pin appearance sir this is klebsiella right now you got the point again nowhere you get this kind of explanation nowhere nowhere in no platform nowhere nowhere that's the speciality of dbmci that's the speciality of dbmci and egrukul right so anyways coming to here what they are asking sir they are asking about peripheral blood smear showed the findings as seen in the figure a figure a is this and figure a is clear cut what is that leishman what is that leishman donovan body leishman or donovan body in leishmaniasis that's why the answer is a <coughs> that's why the answer is e right hope you got the answer sir moving on to the next question sir the next topic is the next topic is right organisms organisms which are seen in the peripheral blood smear there are many organisms seen in the peripheral blood smear but important organisms are sir plasmodium and babesia sir blood i'm talking about blood and tissue i'm talking about blood and tissue sporozoa i'm talking about blood and tissue sporozoa sir two important blood and tissue sporozoa are plasmodium and babesia Two important blood and tissue protozoa are Plasmodium and Babesia. Plasmodium and Babesia. And very important identification point is gametocytes of Plasmodium and gametocytes 
of plasmodium and babesia they are very important identification points in the peripheral blood smear see first of all when you see these images you have to identify these images are peripheral blood smear images right why peripheral blood smears are i see many rbcs what are these round blue color structures right which pale in which pale uh, which shows pale color or pale at the center right paleness at the center so these are rbcs these are rbcs these are rbcs sir when you have rbcs you know that it is peripheral blood smear peripheral blood smear and what are you seeing these structures in the peripheral blood smear sir these are gametocytes <coughs> these are gametocytes but what is the difference between these gametocytes the shape is different the first one is round shape gametocyte round in shape the second one is banana shape gametocytes third one is multi cross cross shape gametocytes we call it as multi cross cross shape gametocytes right you can see a cross within the rbc right you can see a cross within the rbc cross shape gametocyte this is banana shape gametocyte it looks like banana right banana shape gametocyte this is <coughs> round shape gametocyte sir so round shape gametocyte the answer is plasmodium vivax banana shape gametocyte the answer is plasmodium falciparum plasmodium falciparum multi cross or cross shape gametocyte the answer is babesia sir so this is how we identify plasmodium and babesia in the peripheral blood smear by seeing the gametocytes only we are talking about only by seeing the gametocytes because that is what is very very important and that is what most commonly asked and what they are asking here is sir figure a figure a fair figure a is round shape gametocyte y vax that's why the answer is a y vax answer is a y vax it is not falciparum it is y vax answer is a plasmodium vivax because round shape gametocyte if they would ask, if the, in the question if they would asked figure b then it is plasmodium falciparum if they would have asked figure c then it is babesia <coughs> and these are the three important two important plasmodium species vivax and falciparum and another babesia these are blood and tissue sporozoa so this is the topic sir moving on to the next topic sir if you talk about the next topic sir the next topic is sir we are moving on to the mycology now we are moving on to the mycology now when you see this picture when you see this picture black color lesion sir black fungus popularly known as black fungus which is not black fungus because it produces black color lesions this is the typical site what is the typical site para nasal area nose eye then brain this is the typical site right rhino orbito cerebral mucor mycosis right by seeing this image i can clearly see black color lesions involving the nose orbit and brain rhino orbito cerebral mucor mycosis the disease is mucor mycosis this is a clinical presentation of mucor mycosis clinical presentation of mucor mycosis which involves mainly nose eye and brain rhino orbito cerebral mucor mycosis <coughs> because it produces black color lesions it, it was popularly known as black fungus post covid but remember it is not black fungus right because it is white in color lesions are black but fungus is white <coughs> lesions are black but fungus is white sir whatever it is we are talking about mucor mycosis disease sir mucor mycosis disease caused by a group of fungus which belongs to mucor mycetes group of fungi mucor mycetes group of fungi they cause a disease mucor mycosis and what is the speciality of mucor mycetes group of fungi sir these are the asep Aseptate mouths, sir. All the aseptate mouths they come under mucor mycetes group of fungi, and they cause a disease mucor mycosis. And aseptate mouths, which belongs to mucor mycetes groups, are only three. And we remember with the mnemonic RAM, sir. RAM means rhizopus, sapsidia, and mucor. <coughs> RAM means rhizopus, sapsidia, and mucor. Right. So there are three fungus. There are three fungi: rhizopus, sapsi, and mucor. And these three are aseptate mouths. They belongs to a group, mucor mycetes group, and they causes a disease, mucor mycosis, which mainly involves rhino orbito cerebral, rhino orbito cerebral site. The most common site is rhino orbito cerebral site. 
right now sir how to identify rhizopa sapsidae and mucor so these fungi that is mucor mycetes group of fungi they consist of a root like structure root like structure a structure that looks like a root root which we call them as rhizoids see here this is a root like structure rhizoids right this is this is a root like structure what is this rhizoid see here root like structure that is rhizoid root like structure rhizoid these are rhizoids and here there are no rhizoids no rhizoids mucor no rhizoids mucor if rhizoids are there two possibilities rhizopus and apsidia sir how to identify rhizopus and apsidia we have to see whether these rhizoids are arising from nodal point or not what is the nodal point so this is the nodal point this is the nodal point nodal point is the point from where this flower like structure arises whatever you are seeing right if you see if you see right rhizoids arising from the nodal point nodal point then sir rhizopus inter if the rhizoids are arising from internodal point internodal rhizoids sir apsidia no rhizoids sir mucor simple <coughs> what are rhizoids root like structure root like structure if the rhizoids are arising from nodal point then that is rhizopus if the rhizoids are arising from internodal point that is apsidia if there are no rhizoids mucor that's how we identify rhizopus apsidia and mucor <coughs> now with this knowledge if you see the question right sir a thalassemic patient on treatment with desferioxamine presented with the lesions on the face as shown in the figure b lesions are seen as shown in the figure b lpcb showed the following findings as shown in the figure a lpcb is shown as shown in the figure a this is figure a now if you see figure a sir these are rhizoids and you see rhizoids are arising from nodal point therefore the answer is rhizopus that's why the answer is option b that's why the answer is option b rhizopus and one more important point sir most commonly asked in the ins it is treatment of mucor mycosis <coughs> treatment sir if you talk about the treatment of mucor mycosis always remember sir first we have to go for imaging first you have to go for imaging and then you have to go for surgery then you have to go for medicine so this is very very important right guideline says never start medicine never do surgery without imaging first you have to do imaging then only you have to go for surgery and then only you have to go for medicine then only you have to go for medicine sir imaging preferred imaging is sir why to do imaging to see the spread of the disease to see the spread of the disease and what you have to do is mri brain what you have to do is mri brain sir surgery sir removing removing the dead tissue why to do surgery to remove the dead tissue to remove the dead tissue sir medicine to kill the organism right what is the medicine liposomal amphotericin b right very very important first imaging then surgery then medicine order sequence is very important and that is what they test in the exam that is what they test in the exam first imaging then surgery then medicine sequence is important and this is how what this is what guideline says so this is entire thing about mucor mycosis which is very very important most common side which are the fungi and how to identify those fungi based on the rhizoids and what is the treatment options <coughs> what are the treatment what are the treatment options moving on to the last topic right which is very very important for ini set what is that sir markers for invasive fungal infections invasive fungal infection markers invasive fungal infection markers sir we have only two markers right we have only two markers one is bdg what is that sir 1 3 beta d glucan 1 3 beta d glucan and one more is galactomannan 
वन मोर इज गैलेक्टो मैन सर वी हैव ओनली टू मार्कर्स वी हैव ओनली टू मार्कर्स राइट एंड बी डी जी सर वी रिमेंबर वी सी विथ निमोनिक कैप द निमोनिक इज कैप सर बी डी जी इज ए मार्कर विच इज सीन इन इनवेज यू कैंडिडिया इनवेज यू कैंडिडिया इनवेज यू एसपर जिलोसिस इनवेज यू एसपर जिलोसिस एंड इनवेज यू न्यूमोसिस्टोसिस इनवेज यू न्यूमोसिस्टोसिस कैप कैंडिडियासिस एसपर जिलोसिस एंड न्यूमोसिस्टोसिस सर गैलेक्टोमेन इज सीन ओनली इन एसपर जिलोसिस सिंपल क्वेश्चन सिंपल इनवेजिव फंगल इन्फेक्शन मार्कर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोस्ट कॉमनली रिपीटेड इन आई एन आई सी टी एंड रिपीटिंग सिंस लॉन्ग एंड इज स्टिल इट इज एंड इट इज स्टिल रिपीटिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट ओनली टू मार्कर आर दे विच कैन बी डिटेक्टेड इन केस ऑफ फंगल इनवेजिव फंगल इन्फेक्शन मार्कर फॉर इनवेजिव फंगल इन्फेक्शन राइट बी डी जी एंड गैलेक्टोमेन बी डी जी इज सीन इन कैप कैंडिडियासिस एसपर जिलोसिस एंड न्यूमोसिस्टोसिस गैलेक्टोमेन इज सीन इन एसपर जिलोसिस now if you see the question a patient suffering from invasive fungal infection 13 beta d glucan 13 bdg assay is negative they are telling negative negative means first thing what we have to do is rule out cap because bdg is seen in cap so cap means c for candidiasis candidiasis is ruled out a for aspergillosis aspergillosis is ruled out p for pneumocystosis pneumocystosis is not there in the option sir first thing what i can do is because bdg is negative i will rule out cap i will rule out cap because bdg is positive in the cap left out options are two <coughs> therefore answer will be between these two invasive mucormycosis and invasive cryptococcosis sir which one among these two for it continue the question sample culture on bird seed agar showed the following growth as shown in the image they are telling this is bird seed agar and they are showing the following growth what is the growth brown colonies and why we see brown colonies sir we see brown colonies because we see brown colonies only if the fungus is producing melanin pigment if the fungus is producing melanin pigment then we see brown color colonies on bird seed agar and the only fungus that produces melanin pigment is cryptococcus the only fungus which produces melanin therefore cryptococcus is the only fungus which produces melanin pigment therefore cryptococcus is the only fungus that produces brown color colonies on bird seed agar which clearly indicates that the answer is option d invasive cryptococcus <coughs> option d invasive sir if the fungi is not producing melanin pigment no brown color no brown color means you see white color colonies what i am trying to tell is sir whichever fungi which grow which grows on bird seed agar they produce white color colonies because they won't produce melanin pigment on bird seed agar the only fungus which is having melanin pigment which can produce melanin pigment on bird seed agar is only one cryptococcus therefore cryptococcus the only fungus that produces brown brown colonies on bird seed agar because i'm seeing brown color colonies on bird seed agar therefore mucormycosis is ruled out Mycormycosis can't produce brown color colonies on bird seed agar. It is Cryptococcus. Therefore, the answer is invasive Cryptococcus. BDG negative rules out Candidiasis and Aspergillosis because BDG is positive in those two. Brown color colonies on bird seed agar. It clearly tells it is Cryptococcus. It is not any other fungus ruling out the Mycormycosis. Everything is ruled out. The answer is Cryptococcus. Sir, the topic here is invasive fungal infection markers. So with that. we have discussed for more than 2 hours almost 2 hours or more than little more than 2 hours and uh, i have discussed very important questions previous year questions for inct right which i feel which are very very important not just it is my feeling i know these are very very important and i have not just discussed the questions i have discussed the entire topic related to that question so that you can answer even if they ask whatever other questions they can frame right around those topics still you can answer so guys what i say now is all the best for your exams prepare well don't lose the hope and remember there is no special there is no special preparation there is no special preparation for inict whatever you have prepared prepared for neat the same thing goes before inict the only difference is 
right? The only difference is, sir, you have to solve for the NEET exam. You have to solve PYQs of NEET. For INICT, you have to solve PYQs of INICT. <laughs> That's the only difference, right? Whatever you are prepared for NEET, just revise once. Entire thing, revise once. Notes. I know it is too late to tell that. But still, whatever you feel important, you revise the same thing, whatever read for the need. Don't do anything extra. Along with that, do three, four papers of previous papers of NICT. Sir, three, four papers are enough. See, never ask that question that, sir, this much is enough or not. Right? You can't, even if you see it, even if you do 10 years ka paper, how can I say it is enough? You can do more than that also, man. As much as you do, as much as you do, as much as you do, that much beneficial it is. That much beneficial it is. I'm telling at least minimum you have to do three to four years. Three to four years, no? Three to four papers. Three to four. And you have to do it thoroughly. Because I told you in the beginning that they won't test you whether you know it or not. What they test is how thorough you are in that topic. They won't test whether you know that topic or not. In INICT, they will test how thorough you are in that topic. And that's why rather than covering more number of more uh, years of PYQs, right restrict to three to four papers revise those three to four pyq papers thoroughly and get thorough with the concept get thorough with the topics our aim is not just finishing the pyqs and go on that is of no use sir you should get thorough with the topic of the pyqs that is important that you have to understand that takes time and if you are getting thorough with the topics of pyqs obviously three four papers itself is too much to finish in the small in the small time whatever you have so in the short time, whatever you have, that's why rather than completing the more number of PYQs, get through with the topics of the PYQs, revise the PYQs. Do well, all the best for your exams, guys. So hope you do well in microbiology and hope your microbiology, if you have attended my class, you know that microbiology is one of, uh, microbiology will become one of your strong subject to score in the exams. You would have feel, you would have felt that when you have given the neat exam and uh, I am telling you whatever topics I have discussed, these are very, very important. And I have taken more time for general microbiology because general microbiology is very important. And immunology, I have discussed only one topic. What is that? Immunity because that is very, very important. And whatever is important, I have discussed. And all these topics are very, very important. Just believe in these questions. Go through these topics. Along with that, whatever we have prepared for need, you prepare those things. Once again, important things, you go on and then solve three to four papers of minimum minimum maximum as much as you want to do minimum three to four papers and you have to do it thoroughly that you should not forget you have to do it thoroughly with that yes i will provide you the pdf with that thank you guys all the best for your exams come up with flying colors all the best thank you bye good night Sir, is one shot and PYQ is enough? Again, don't ask me that it is enough or that is enough. <laughs> as much as you do, that is better. As much as you do, right? That much is better for you. But minimum you have to do that much. For INSET, I can't say just, uh, what is that one shot revision and this is enough. I can't say that. No, this is INSET exam. You require, you have to do more. You have to do more. But whatever is covered here is, obviously, important things are covered here. I can say important things are covered not, but not, you can't say everything is covered, you can't say it is enough. You have to do more than that. You have to do more than that. Good night, sir. Thank you for a great session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Ashwini, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, macro to micro, yeah, that is my job here, making macrobiology to micro. Right, because microbiology, we think it is not micro, it is macro. There are so many organisms. And it is very difficult. It is a very vast subject, a very huge subject. And we are here to simplify, to make it micro. We make it appear like micro, though it is macro. So that we can score well in the exams. Great coverage in short, short span of time. Thank you very much again. And with that, guys, all of you all the best. The final good night. And thank you very much. Bye-bye.